Hey everyone, and welcome back to another reaction video. Today we're reacting to Game Theory iFix Garden Ban Ban. Now, if I remember this correctly, and I am pretty sure I am, Garden of Bam Bam is this one horror game that's involving these like creatures that I believe are animatronics, but I believe they're like scientifically created creatures meant to play and interact with children. And if I'm correct, it's around pre-k to kindergarten to like first second grade at most and pre-k to kindergarten at least at least that's what i remember vaguely enough now let's see if i'm right about this and I'm guessing that the newest update involving the game isn't as great as it should be. At least that's what I'm getting from the title itself. So let's see what's happened since we've last seen Garden of Bam Bam. So if you do enjoy this reaction video, hit the like button down below, hit the subscribe button to support the channel, support the content provided, and so on and so forth. Hit the notification button to be notified immediately when your video comes out. If you have any videos you'd like to recommend, put it down in the comments section below. And I'll react to it as soon as possible. And the link to this video will be down in the description, so be sure to check that out and give Game Theory some love and support for the video they made. Otherwise, if you want to see the video before I react to it, pause the video right now, check out the original, and then come right back to see my reaction to it. So with all this said, let's start this video. It's that time again, theorists. Garden of Bam Bam 7 has arrived, and with it, another round of ridiculous lore. What is Syringian's plan? Who is this new Bam Bam? And why is Raspowski giving the performance of a lifetime? Out of all the people that the mayor could have sent, he sends you a human. What happened to this city? But instead of Wait, driving he's myself an actor here? more insane trying to solve it, I figured I'd take a note out of Syringian's book and try a more scientific. No, seriously. Raspowski. He's an actor in this. Okay, I'm actually really interested now. Okay. We... Mm. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, the show that puts the jive in jivanium. Groovy, baby. I wish I had Ugh. your excitement, Austin, because today is a day that I have been dreading for a long time time i've been dreading this theory more than poppy more than bendy even more than five nights of freddy's but we just got ourselves a brand new installment which means it's time for me to tackle the insanity that is garden of freaking ban ban however let's be honest mm. with ourselves each time a new installment is released for this thing all bets are off in the law department there are some small underlying narrative i say that the nap floor is going to be more of a nightmare to do when you get more invested into it than Whatever current thing, current of Bam Bam is lore wise, because the lore is kind of shaky. And by kind of, I mean pretty much a weird thing. I mean, I mean, come on. Despite the game giving us more notes, more secret rooms, and more characters that try to kill us, then help us, then try to kill us again. It's impossible to predict where this story is going. Heck, I would be surprised if the Euphoric Brothers even know where it's going at this point. So, instead of trying to solve the lore like we typically would, I wanted to take a different approach. 
because ever since this franchise first began, there's one aspect of Bam Bam's world building that I haven't been able to stop thinking about. A cornerstone of Bam Bam's entire premise that has been largely left ignored. Jyvania, the green goop that has helped bring all of these mascots to life in the first place. Despite how important its mere existence is to all the events that have happened in this world, we still don't really know a whole bunch about what it really is. In this latest game, Syringian, the new okay. red character with multiple arms and surgical tools, he seems to know a lot about Jyvania. And we get a lot of notes telling us that he's worked with the stuff, but he's also keeping his cards close to his chest, telling us that he can't say anything because that information is classified. And I would understand why. Jyvanium is apparently an element, a genome, artificial blood, and oh yeah, it explodes. <sighs> I wouldn't be surprised if the reason he's so tight-lipped, metaphorically anyway, is because there just isn't an answer. It's a classic deus ex machina, able to do whatever the euphoric robbers needed to do in order to move the story along. Or at least, that's what I initially thought. Because even though Jyvanium seems impossible, I have found a substance or combination of substances that exists right now, which would take this from science fiction to science fact. And with us now having Syringian hmm. being a man or thing of science, I think it would be great if he weren't just spouting complete nonsense the entire time, you know? So consider this my gift to you, Euphoric Brothers, in honor of my first Ban Ban Theory as host. Whip out those copies of Ban Biology because it's time to figure out what Jyvanium is really made of. The most obvious thing I can think of that gives us any kind of clue as to what this stuff is supposed to be is its name. Jyvanium having that EM at the end immediately reminds me of the elements from the periodic table. In fact, okay. 79 of the 118 currently discovered elements have a name that ends in Eum, so it would fit Ooh. right in. The logo for Jyvanium also seems to align with this. We see it plastered all around the facility, and it looks like it would belong alongside the likes of Minerium and Prasia Dimium. These details seem to suggest that a Jyvanium is simply a newly discovered element, but there's one big problem with that notion. As you may be aware, elements on the periodic table are placed at random. They're arranged by their atomic number, which is the number of protons they have around their nucleus. Hydrogen has one one proton. Therefore, it has an atomic number of one and is listed first in the periodic table. But take another look at the periodic image for Jyvanium and you'll see it has an atomic number of infinity. I don't think I need to tell you that it's not possible to have an infinite number of protons. An element has to have a set amount of them to be an element. Infinite is just a never-ending amount and even if it were possible, it would be incredibly unstable. We see this with any element beyond element 98, California. All of these elements have too many protons to be stable, and so they aren't actually found in nature. They can only be created artificially in a lab. And when they do, these elements only exist for very brief amounts of time. Oganeson, the largest element we have with 118 protons, has a half-life of just seven-tenths of a millisecond. That's around 18 and a half times faster than your brain can even process visual information. After that, it breaks down into lighter elements, which are more stable. So even if Jyvanium was meant to be some super heavy element, it is highly unlikely that it could ever be created in large enough quantities or exist. Okay, I can get where this is going. I'm not too big into the whole science detail, especially when it involves the periodic table of elements. Because that is a long list to even try to go through. But I understand. The amount of protons needed to make this thing still there and able to do whatever it can. It must be made from multiple elements from the periodic table, but stable enough to actually still work. Which is very hard when you think about it, because 118 only lasts, lasts for 0.7 um, milliseconds. Not even a full millisecond. So that means that these elements that are combined, they have to be so low on the protein number that it's going to be possible for it to be around for a long time. Or really well contained so that the elements just don't, you know.
break it apart and become something else. But then again, the unstability of it could actually work in favor. Since if it can be flammable, that would be a negative side effect from the amount of protons that are added. So that's pretty this cool. Long enough to ever have a barrel of the stuff. Instead, I think the name Jibanium is more of a red herring. Or more accurately, it's just dubious marketing. Brands add the E of suffix to their products all the time to make them sound ah. scientific. The same thing goes okay, for yeah, that makes sense. It's supposed to make things feel more cool and futuristic. I mean, just look at Facebook's rebrand to Meta. That's what I think we're seeing here. In one of the notes, we see the Jibanium is being shipped in from another location, quote, down south. So this isn't something they're making at the kindergarten, but instead they're buying it in from a supplier. A supplier that is using clever branding to promote their product. This actually makes figuring out the whole thing a heck of a lot easier because now the only information we have to tackle is what we learn from the scientific case update reports that we find throughout the game. Besides listing their name, case number, and lore about the characters, each of these mascot reports lists one very specific detail, their genome. A genome is just another genome? name for a creature's entire genetic code. Basically, their whole string of DNA. Each of us gets one genome. Fair. That's yeah, what makes okay. us unique. My genome is going to be different from your genome, but each of us just has the one. So the fact that there were multiple genomes listed, including Jibanium, immediately got me worried that we'd hit another roadblock. You just can't really have two full genomes at once. But I think the Euphoric Brothers were actually on the right track. In one of Sting of Flynn's entries, they talk about mixing Jibanium with the other genomes, which sounds to me like they're creating one genome out of the parts, or DNA, from multiple genomes. And so that got me thinking about a little scientific discovery known as the CRISPR-Cas9 complex. CRISPR is an absolute game changer when it comes to the future of genetic research. Originally discovered as part of the defense system in certain species of bacteria, you can think of CRISPR as the world's first genetic find and replace tool. Scientists who want to edit, say, the gene of eye color would synthesize a small segment of DNA that matches the gene they wish to edit. This snippet of DNA is then attached to the CRISPR-Cas9. This complex can then be inserted into the DNA of a person and the CRISPR will go and cut out the DNA only at the place in the genome that matches the snippet. From here, scientists can add in new DNA, like the gene of a different eye color, and voila, you've functionally edited the genome of one person with the DNA from a different person. And it doesn't just work within one species either. There have been experiments introducing human genes into pigs to make their organs more suitable for transplants. And there's a study going on right now to see if introducing elephant genes to humans can stop the development of cancerous tumors. Basically, with the help Damn. That is some very interesting science facts. I never knew that was happening at the moment. Development into a way that we can stop brain tumors, huh? That's interesting. And a way for pigs to develop their organs that can be transplanted into people. Interesting. The only thing I'll probably have an issue with on that is you gotta make sure the blood isn't gonna be affecting the human body and so on and so forth. With the help of CRISPR, we can essentially add any gene we want into any genome we'd like. It's truly insane stuff, which seems fitting given how insane the lore of this franchise is. But there's a cherry on top of all of this. CRISPR is obviously really small. So in order for scientists to better monitor where the DNA they've added has gone, they'll often attach a special protein to the CRISPR mix called GFP4, green fluorescent protein, which, if the name wasn't a huge okay. giveaway, is a fluorescent green color, just like the Jibanium we see throughout the game. Of course, CRISPR isn't without its side effects, and it turns out we also see those in the game. One of the things that scientists are most worried about when it comes to CRISPR is the potential that this cutting process may cut in the wrong place and lead to serious Something that we see time and time again to characters like Apila Bird, Nab Nab, and Bam Bam when they are exposed to excess Jibanium. There's also concerns that modifying mm. one gene could affect other genes in unforeseen ways. Which is probably why the game makes it quite clear that adding more than three genomes together is a big no-no. Leading to a phenomenon known as a genome cloid. Where the mascot will essentially reject the other DNA and revert back to a single uncombined genome. Finally, there's a chance that the body's immune system will fight and reject whatever DNA you're trying to play. 
it. We see this all the time with organ and blood transplants, but the same thing is feared with CRISPR because it's essentially a bacteria. So not only might the body be fighting foreign DNA, but also the bacteria that it's not used to, leading to the foreign substance getting attacked by the body and causing immense amounts of pain, just like we hear about in the case reports. However, CRISPR can only be half the story. CRISPR explains gyvanium's color, the side effects, and its ability to combine with genes from other donors, but CRISPR doesn't have DNA of its own. For gyvanium to be considered a genome, as the game puts it, it would need its own set of DNA to splice itself in with whatever human or jellyfish DNA the scientists would choose. So, we need to figure out what creature the gyvanium DNA is actually coming from. The problem is, there are literally millions of possible species on this planet, so narrowing it down to just one seems like it would be like trying to find a crayon in the world's largest kindergarten. Fortunately, the game does give us a couple of clues to work with. In the case report for case one, update number two, we get this line about the functions of gyvanium. The case mentioned in the previous report has moved an arm, as if its artificial nervous system could work for a split second. As predicted, GV seems to provide identical functions to blood. It also had a strange physical effect. GV appears to expand in size when it is set to flow, and as a result, the case has grown a number of veins across its body. So, not only is gyvanium supposedly carrying out the role of blood in these mascots, it's also able to create more complicated body structures like artificial veins and nervous systems. CRISPR can do many things, but act like blood or create veins or nervous tissue? It cannot. But you know what might? Stem cells. Our bodies are made up of lots of different kinds of cells. Brain cells, heart cells, colon cells, each one programmed to carry out a specific role in the body. But okay. not all cells are so specialized. When you're first conceived, your body is made up of a unique kind of cell known as a stem cell. Stem cells are essentially cells oh. that don't know what they want to be when they grow. They might actually. become a heart cell or a brain neuron, only time will tell. Unfortunately, by the time you're born, the vast majority of your stem cells would have differentiated into all the different cell types that make up your body. However, we are looking for humans as our gyvanium donors. On the case reports, gyvanium is listed as a separate genome from humans, and in the update report, it says mammalian circulatory systems are ineffective. Now, technically, mammalian isn't a word, but I think I get where they're coming from. Basically, it cannot be a mammal-based circulatory system, and so gyvanium is not only non-human, but also non-mammal. So, what does that leave us with? We need a specimen that is not a mammal with the ability to create stem cells throughout its life cycle that can be turned into whatever body part is necessary. It should be simple, right? Well, as it turns out, there's a lot of wacky creatures in this world, and some of them have the ability to grow any body part they want when it's really? damaged or even cut off. Many species of lizards can regrow their tails. Axolotls have been known to regrow their heart muscles, spinal cords, and whole other limbs. But there is I one know creature that, that knocks all of them out of the water. A goofy looking black worm known as the I did not know that. And that makes me wonder if I really did want it to know that. So, the most likely choice is a worm. Though, from what I'm seeing, apparently a worm is the ideal being that they got it the stem cell from that helped make the bam bams as the panarian when it comes to regenerational prowess no one beats the panarian this thing is generating stem cells indefinitely able to create skin vein like structures nerves to the point that if you cut a panaria in half not only does the head regrow its missing tail but the newly severed tail will grow an entirely new head no wonder all these characters in garden of bam bam seem to just spring back to life after being severely injured they just need a breather to regrow and repair all the damaged bits not only that but studies have shown that this newly grown head for some reason is able to retain and pass on memories from its previous head. If the memory gene from the planaria is being spliced into the human genome to put into these mascots, it could explain why, for some reason, these mascots have memories about the lives of their human genome donors, such as their name and occupation. Planaria don't have traditional circulatory systems either. Instead, they have what appear to be veins, but it's really their digestive system, and it does pretty much the same thing a circulatory system does for mammals. It transports nutrients throughout the body. So, that's a big old tick for the non-mammal circulatory system thing. And speaking of nutrients, what is the one thing we know that Ban Ban loves to eat? No liver, no intestines, but most importantly, no food. And you'll never guess what planarians feed on. Dead and decaying materials such as organs, including 
liver, and yes, pancreas. Despite the fact that according to some studies, it has proven to offer very little nutritional value to them. Maybe better um, to just stick to the vegetables. Perhaps some of the vegetables have to be collected indeed. But we can't just say Jivanium is planarian DNA and call it a day. No siree. The other genomes listed on the case reports use the full scientific names of specific species. So what planarian is Jivanium from exactly? Thankfully, there's one detail that helps narrow it down. The location. There's a note that tells us that Jivanium comes from, quote, our friends down south. And based on the plane ticket telling us the closest airport is Montreal, Canada, it feels pretty conclusive that our friends down south are somewhere in the United States. And while planaria aren't native to the United States, there are a handful of species that have managed to break their way to its shores. And one of them doesn't just do everything we've already talked about, but it also looks suspiciously like our new friend slash betrayer, Syringian. Let me introduce you all to the shovel-headed garden worm, or as it's technically called, by Paleum Coens. Yeah, Syringian's head isn't an accident. According to Syringian's case reports, he's made up of only two genes. Human and Jivanium. But much like how Stinger Flint's form is based on his jellyfish DNA, Syringian seems to be based more on his Jivanium or Vipalium side rather than his human one. And with this being the specific species for Jivanium, Vipalium coens is known for secreting a neurotoxin that can be dangerous to humans and pets. That toxin isn't mixing well with the mascot's human and animal parts. But with that, it feels like we found ourselves the source of Jivanium, planarium, specifically Vipalium coens, a non mammalian creature from the United States with extraordinary regenerative abilities, able to rebuild their vein-like digestive system and nervous system. Then just mix it in with CRISPR-Cas9 and a little green protein, and you two can create these unholy abominations in your own haunted kindergarten. There's just one tiny detail that I mentioned right at the... Yeah, I don't know if anyone want to create one of these things, but yeah, it seems logical if you put it all together like that. Wait, is it possible to mix all this stuff together? I don't know. Right at the start of this video that I've yet to address. I had this entire theory written out and ready to go before Bam Bam 7 dropped, and so, of course, they had to throw one final curveball at me. Jivanium explodes. Why? Why would you do this ah, to me? We were that this issue. close to a clean run. <sighs> it's okay. It's fine. We can do this. Deep breaths. Is initially such a problem is that DNA isn't explosive or flammable. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Researchers have found that DNA is a great flame retardant substance and are experimenting with coating highly flammable materials like cotton with it. However, what if it's not the DNA exploding, but the barrel the Jivanium is stored in? Take a look at the explosion. It's not a fiery explosion like the others we've seen in the games before. There's an immediate flash with some sparks, and then there's just a pillar of white smoke. That looks less like the burning of a flammable substance like plane fuel, and instead more like when a pressure cooker Explodes. Why would that be the case here? Well, as we've discussed, Jivanium contains DNA, and it is common practice to store DNA in liquid nitrogen so that it doesn't degrade. Now, liquid nitrogen has a temperature of minus 196 degrees Celsius or minus 320 degrees Fahrenheit, which oh. is because most places aren't that cold, and so oh. it ends up turning from a liquid into a gas. This wouldn't be an issue so long as it's stored in a container with a loose-fitting lid and not, oh, I don't know. An okay, that... Okay, well, I'm understanding this a bit better now. Basically, it's the build of pressure that comes with the nitrogen being mixed with the DNA. Builds, and if it builds up, it explodes. Okay, that's that, that actually makes more sense. Especially considering it has white smoke and not black. So, yeah, that really helps differentiate the two so yeah this actually does sound logical an oil drum those things are known for having tight seals and they've been left out at least since bring a friend day if not well before that and so the nitrogen gas continues building and building and building until we hit the final nail in the coffin by lighting the drum on fire how we do that, I'm not exactly sure. It's not like there's a fuse or anything. But regardless, that extra heat clearly tips it over the edge, heating up the gas to the point where it can no longer be contained. And then, boom, an explosion of gas with the metal barrel breaking apart and scraping against itself, causing sparks to fly. Given how all these containers have been left out for a while, maybe we'd be best to avoid them going forward. But there you have it, theorists. The scientific answer for what Bam Bam's mysterious Jivanium truly is. 
is by Paleum Coenz DNA combined with CRISPR and green fluorescent proteins, all stored in giant vats of liquid nitrogen to keep them stable. Is this going to be the answer we're given in the final Bam Bam game? Well, Bam Bam 304? Eh, probably not. But I'm hoping that the Euphoric Brothers see this video and maybe, just maybe, we can steer at least part of this franchise in a more realistic direction. Wouldn't okay. That be something? And hey, if you guys want a sense. science consultant, I'd be happy to help out. I'm just a DM away. <sighs> Who am I kidding? You guys are just going to say it's alien blood, aren't you? But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. And if finding out the scientific plausibility of... Well, technically... No, no, I don't think the blood of it would work. Would it? No, I don't think so. Well, maybe no, no. I don't. I don't see it working that way. But then again, mm, chemistry is a pain to think of. Honestly, I find that this video is actually on point but what they would actually do in the game is probably not gonna be this it would be a surprise a good one i think if it was going in this direction but then again you're gonna have to also consider the fact that they might not even do it and just might make up this element But then again, it could be the case. Who knows? I guess we're going to have to wait and see with the next couple parts of Bam Bam. So I hope that you all enjoyed this reaction video. If you did, hit the like button down below. Hit the subscribe button to support the channel, support the content provided, and so on and so forth. And tell me what you think of this whole science theory kind of thing. In the comment section below, yeah. <laughs> it's weird to call this a science theory when we're going into a game theory, because this time we're trying to figure out what this one element could be and putting it into a theory, even though it probably wouldn't be the case, considering the fact that if they haven't planned this out, this is just gonna be a bit of random nonsense. So yeah, that's uh, something to really consider. Also, be sure to give Game Theory some love and support for the video they made. And yeah, with this all said, I hope you all enjoy it and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!